Hello, my name is Phil and welcome to our special Radio.co webinar all about local community radio, or more specifically, what it's about, how to go about it, and where the future lies for it. Um, if you've been watching a lot of my videos and streams for the past 12 months or so, you may be quite surprised to find that I'm not in my uh, dimly lit uh, bedroom and, and office space because I'm actually in the Radio.co office space because as the world returns to some kind of normality, as do we. Um, now, moving back to the office, uh, you know, I'm not just accustomed now to the, uh, the sights and the sounds of Manchester, a nice comfortable chair and something else to look at. I'm also joined by uh, my colleagues and my friends who I've not seen for quite some time. So it's wonderful to welcome sitting next to me, Pete. Thanks, Phil. Nice to see you. You too. After I mean, this, all this time. Exactly. I mean, this is actually the first time we've actually physically properly seen each other because you actually joined the team while we're all uh, sort of working from home. Six months ago, in fact, this week. Wow, this is really flown by. <laughs> but yeah, so it's nice to see you in person. Uh, and the reason why Pete is here is, oh, I mean, of course, he's up and visiting. He's a nice person to come and see and chat to. But the main reason Pete is here um, is because, uh, well, we're talking about community radio. And Pete personally um, has some huge extensive collection of knowledge and experience, uh, you know, working within, consulting, and even, I believe, uh, directing. Uh, in fact, executive directing. Executive, yeah. sorry. Uh, asterisk next to that. <laughs> um, so, Phil, you know, while we're talking about uh, community radio, then the best person to ask within the team is indeed Pete with this, uh, you know, huge amount of knowledge. So we're going to pin a couple of questions to him, such as, you know, the differences between radio now and radio when he perhaps started, where he sees the future going with, uh, with radio, and some tips from the both of us about how to get involved and how to make the most of your uh, radio station. Um, so uh, I guess, first of all, Pete, the best way to uh, kickstart this chat about community radio is to uh, talk about your beginnings you know how did you start in uh, community radio all all those years ago all those years ago so i'll give a quick story because <laughs> we haven't got all night <laughs> so it started 14 years ago when i was 14 uh, a school project because i went to a media school uh, we did a three-week school project a couple of years later that turns into a full-time community radio station it started volunteering there basically did every role in the station you know i did a presenter role engineer role and so on. As the years went on, I then got a job for a commercial radio group. Seven years later, um, I then left the group and joined Radio.co. So it's been 14 years of doing every single role you can think of and uh, really enjoying myself. And just, you know, and whilst I had that job, I still volunteered and still volunteer today and um i just love radio i can't really escape it to be honest yeah so so you know even though it's something you have been involved in for quite some time you are still actively involved sort of nowadays 100 percent. so i still present a weekly radio show um and a drive time show in fact and um obviously as you said exec director <laughs> of the radio station and look after all things technical so um yeah it's a it's a huge passion for mine and uh something you know i'm really excited about carrying on yeah, good. I mean, that, that's one thing I always talk about, you know, because being on the customer success or the sales team rather of Radio.co, you know, we may be at the end of the day in the market for selling radio, but where I come from, it's all about that passion. I want to just help anyone from any sort of background and experience get into radio. So, you know, it's a really great place to work if you are so passionate and, uh, you know, and experienced in radio as, as you are. Yeah, I think radio is one of those things which we all get into, don't we? Anyone watching this video is probably into radio for a reason we're talking about because you're passionate about radio. Mm. You know, we, we all do it. We all spend many hours doing what we do. And it's one of those things which you really have a passion for mm. and you just love doing. You know, I, I quite often go, oh, it's late. Why are you still working? You know, it's because I love my job. You know, I love doing radio. Yeah, excellent. I mean, that's the main thing. I mean, we're going to be talking now about specifics regarding, I mean, not just your time and, and mm. experience in radio, but in general, you know, trends and, you know, the best ways to, you know, grow your own station within this industry. Um, so I guess sort of the first question really, Pete, obviously you've told us about how you got started in radio, but I mean, one odd question, it sprung to mind, but I feel it's something that a lot of people in particular ask me on, on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, did you have any misconceptions about radio that were kind of thwarted once you, uh, you know, began in the industry? Yeah, so obviously I began at such a young age. You know, back then I was thinking, oh, yeah, everyone in radio is earning a lot of money. <laughs> That's a misconception, <laughs> tell you that. Um, you also don't realise how small teams are until you're actually in it. You know, you might think of a 
of a radio station having all these people behind the scenes when actually when you break down it's you know one man and a producer you know mm. man or woman and, and a producer doing a show and um teams are so much smaller than you actually think they are until you break that down so um yeah that's probably my biggest misconception of how unglamorous radio can be <laughs> behind the scenes and how small it can be to considering what we all think about yeah and as you say about the the whole sort of the money involved and stuff it's that's why you've got to have that passion because you've got 100%. to enjoy what you're doing yeah. with you know without that much of a return yeah and you do a long you do lots of hours and lots of work and uh yeah you, if you didn't have a passion you wouldn't be doing it yeah i, I must say I, I i have to agree with the, the sides of teams because you know i've spent you know a good number of years producing on, on national radio myself and uh, yeah i was that one producer that um you know spread out across so many you know half a dozen shows or so looking after the station different shows so and it was something that was very quite shocking and quite you know you feel like you're thrown in the deep end you know radio do have very very small teams so you know you've got to be that busybody in a sense you know you've got to be experienced Definitely. in lots of different fields because if you just concentrate on presenting you know that's great but if you know how to produce you know how to do a little bit of tech engineering here and there you know you'll uh, you'll find yourself to be a more uh, a more beneficial get really for a team i think that's the point with radio isn't it? you need to be able to do everything because <laughs> yeah. because you will at some point do everything you'll be an engineer fixing the radio station at night time and then a presenter in the morning <laughs> <laughs> exactly so there we go a good little tip there we'll, we'll, we'll go through some tips and some guidance at the end but that's your first one to make a note of do everything do everything <laughs> multitask if i say if you can but yeah you, you simply must multitask <laughs> with radio um it, on the topic of advice what's the most valuable piece of advice or experience you took away from working Working within community radio yeah so kind of on that subject of doing everything but also doing everything and staying in your team mm. so I you know from community radio as a as a whole you know we at the station I'm a director of we've got I think 200 volunteers and we all do our own things but if we didn't work as a team nothing would ever get done mm. so it's that trying to stay as a team together whilst having your own unique roles does that make sense you know yeah. so being good at your little your little role but keeping that team close to you mm. and not just kind of getting sidetracked with the wider picture which is the station and its end goal mm. you know, so for a community station it's you know you want to be a, the best local community station in your area and you should all be at, you know trying to hit that end goal um i think it's really important it's easy to get in your own world and doing your own little you know your own dance over in my mind and forgetting the rest mm. but actually having that end goal in mind oh you know we are the local community radio station and that's what we're doing when we're all hitting the same goal yeah so yeah that's probably the biggest thing for me yeah so would you say you know it's great to think big and be ambitious you know i want to be the you know the best rock station the best breakfast mm. show station in, in the world but really you want to kind of focus on first and foremost that community the actual local um 100 percent, yeah so you know because this is just about community radio Community radio, you can be that you should aim, always aim to be the best community station you can be, but your end goal should be your community. You know, what, what is your target? So if you're targeting your local area because you want to be the best local radio station, then don't forget that goal. You know, strive to be the best show, but don't forget the goal of being the best local station for your local audience. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this might be a bit of a, a bit of a think, a bit of a thought provoking question, but how do you personally define community radio? What is it to you? It's a good question, um, and it's one of those where my answer probably changes every time you ask me. <laughs> so, um, first of all, I kind of define community radio as local radio now. And we'll talk later probably about the changes in radio recently and so on, but in my mind, community radio now is the local radio station. It's, it's filling the void which has been left by other stations leaving the area. And so, how, you know, how do I define local community radio? So, I define radio is doing something the big boys aren't doing mm. you know so if you're playing music and doing great content great but what's different about you than the commercial groups you know what is your local area doing so are you going to all the local events are you talking about local what's on are you are you delivering local content are all your volunteers from the local area so i define local radio you know i define it as 100 percent. what are you doing for your 10 mile radius mm. area which no one else is doing yeah, it, it's very much, again, uh, a, you know, a popular question a lot of people ask me is what's the difference between launching a radio station and just listening to something on Spotify or mm. Apple Music and things like that? Well, I mean, it's that idea of community and live interaction with people. You know, 100%. you can't you can't fake that. You know, great, you know, 
I always feel things like Spotify and indeed Netflix, you know, I know it's a different medium, but you know, there's so much choice, you know, what on earth are you going to listen to or, or what you're going to interact with? Having something like community radio is something that you feel is personally tailored for you. There's content, there's music you like, maybe not all of it, but it's directed at you and it's, in, it's inviting you in to get involved in this, you know, indeed sense of community and, you know, and, and you know, being involved. I think if listeners tune in and they hear a song they don't like or, you know, they hear something they don't like, if you're delivering that level of local content, then that's fine. That's, you know, that's not what Spotify's doing. Mm. For example, you know, I, if I tune in, you know, so I'm up here in Manchester, you know, for a while and I, I'm listening to the local stations because I want to hear what's going on in the local area. Mm. You know, that's, I don't want it just, I'm not worried about the music. That's background noise. You know, I want to hear the local content. And if you're doing that, it doesn't matter if a listener doesn't like a song, they'll carry on listening. Yeah, it, there's always going to be an audience for it. It's very much uh, similar to launching a podcast. They always say the best way to launch a successful one is really to find your niche. You know, finding something that even just a small group of people like because they, they'll be loyal towards it. And it's very 100%. much like that, you know. Um, you know, even if you are just concentrating on this small local community, that small local community will be loyal and listen to you through and through. 100%, completely agree with that. Um, so, I mean, again, carrying on with community radio, what do you believe to be the most important aspect of any community radio station? What's, what's one thing kind of like at the top of the list that you, if you were advising someone to start a station, you know, what's the first thing that they should really consider? The short answer is that is to the local content. Yeah. You know, if you're not going to do local, don't do it. Mm. <laughs> you know, what, what are you bringing? What no one else is bringing? Do that. That's a short, simple answer. <laughs> no, but it's the right answer in, yeah. in, in most sense. And the know, second point would be the volunteers. You know, yeah. all of these stations are mainly volunteers. So don't start a station because you want to be on the radio. <laughs> start a station because you've got a great team who want to deliver local content and something no one else is doing. Do that and it'll be a success. Yeah, and it, it comes back down to that passion. As long as you have the passion and the drive to do something, you'll always be successful, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Uh, uh, more questions, Pete, so I hope you're ready. Um, if you were to launch your very own brand new community radio station today, I mean, yep. you can do technically working at uh, radio.co, but right if, you, now, yeah. if you were actually to seriously launch one today, what's the first thing you would do? And also, what's the first thing you would avoid doing? So the first thing I would do if I was planning on launching like a community station, um, forget all the tech side aside, because, you know, with our system, especially, it's just easy. So let's forget about that. But I would find kind of like you said with podcast and find the niche, mm -hmm. but find the area. So, you know, where I live, there's already community radio stations. I won. Um, <laughs> so I wouldn't launch one there because yeah. you don't need multiple community radio stations for one community. So I would find that community, find the niche, find the audience who aren't being delivered a, a product at the moment. Um, and the one thing I would avoid doing is just building a radio station, which sounds like every other radio station mm -hmm. on the dial, you know, because if, if you sound like the big boys, for example, why are people going to tune into you in, over them? They're not. So yeah, find that audience. Find the audience who needs someone who aren't getting anything right now from anyone else. Deliver to them and they'll come. Yeah, yeah. Because particularly with online radio these days, you know, you don't actually have to be based in that no, local area. I could launch a station from here in Manchester for Cornwall. I mean, it's probably not a good idea unless I know a ton about the yeah. local area of Cornwall. I mean, it's quite a, quite a trip away. Yeah. But, you know, it's, you know, if you find that gap in the market, for say, you know, and it still is out there. There are a lot of, um, you know, uh, networks across the, across the UK that have local radio when really it's just coming from London, you know, and it's yeah. just... Uh, filtered into uh, or, uh, the countries up and uh, the stations up and down the country, so you know find something where the only station available there is you know one of these networks, and that's it. You've got your you're in there, and you've got something that you can appeal to the actual people living there rather than the people they think are living there. I think COVID has really helped us, as in everyone, really develop that need of forgetting the, the physical radio station for the second. You know, there's lots of community stations still to this day, and we see them on the system who are all doing their shows from home, but delivering that local content for that area. As long as they're doing that, it doesn't matter if they have a building, which is a great expense. It doesn't matter where they are. As long as their main focus is delivering that level of content for that community, not you know, what can go wrong? Yeah, I mean, it's going to turn into take a shot every time he says passion, but it's 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 very much like, yeah. you know, as long as you've got that, that passion, that drive to, you know, do your shows from your bedroom, mm. but you're still, you know, uh, broadcasting to hundreds, maybe even thousands of people in your local area, you know, it, 
people don't at the end of the day don't really care where you're based uh, you know building specifically they just want um, to be listening to a voice that they enjoy listening to sounds pretty knowledgeable is entertaining and you know delivers the expectations that they have I guess and I think to an extent as well like the local accent fits an area mm. so if I started a radio station in Manchester my Somerset accent might kind of give the clue away that I'm not from Manchester <laughs> but they, you know if people from Manchester tune in and hear a Manchester voice or, or you know a London or a Cornwall voice in my area that's what they want you know mm. they, they want to feel connected oh look he's a local lad you know yeah. and, that, and that really helps yeah it's kind of like a, a mentality that they've had in mind uh, you know you know since like the 30s and stuff with the BBC you know sort of regional accents uh, I mean it used to be the case having a regional accent made you seem more genuine and trustworthy mm. I think is where they were coming from then um, I don't know whether that's still the case now but I guess it's a case of just now is yeah you know be be home proud you know be have that regional accent talk about the place that you're from and how much 100%. you love it because there are people in the exact same boat as you and that's uh, that's what they want to listen they want to be proud that they're listening to a station from their small local area yeah never hide the true you yeah it's probably another tip you know, add to the list <laughs> never hide the true self and no, never hide your true self yeah and you said mentioned about um you know you know your, your avoidance tip about um uh, you know, sort of don't just start a radio station because you want to be on air. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's great if you want to just create a station to play your favorite music. That's great. But, you know, at the end of the day, you want to build an audience. So if you wanted to make a, an all, I don't know, heavy metal station or an all blues station, only kind of start that, I guess, if you feel you are genuinely knowledgeable and you're bringing something different to the table, something original or something that's really all about you. It's interesting you say that because, you know, from working at Radio.co for the last six months and seeing all of our clients it's really interesting to just listen to some of them and hear you know like you say these really individual niche audience music you know let's say a jazz station and you tune in you hear a guy talking all about it and you're like wow this is really knowledgeable and even though that's not my thing i can just sit there and listen to this guy talking about you know jazz music because it's like wow he's really knowledgeable and that's what the audience want isn't it they want to hear you know, Phil talking about jazz because you know everything about jazz. Yeah, you want to be like that track Phil played was terrible, but he he tells me it's good. So, yeah, so he, he tells must know me what it's good, about. and he knows exactly how it was composed. <laughs> <laughs> he's knowledgeable. Uh, so yeah, so I, I, you know some good good sort of tips there, and I guess um, another question I'll see. You know, you've been involved in uh, radio for fourteen years now. Um, so what's kind of the difference would you say between community radio today in twenty twenty one? and radio you know when you first started when you know when you were first introduced into it yeah so i would say whilst a lot of the things are the same just grown the differences i see now are the barriers to entry are so much lower than what they were 14 years ago you know when we started out we needed a building we needed thousands of pounds of equipment you know there wasn't really these online services now there's many services us you know everyone and the barriers to interest are so much lower. That is a good thing. It's also a bad thing because suddenly now everyone's doing radio, especially <laughs> in COVID world, you know. Um, but the biggest, you know, the difference, one of the differences I've seen, especially with community radio, is, once again, I don't want to say the word passion because, yeah, short, short. Um, but the passion people have shown, you know, lockdown in the UK has re and actually around the world has really shown people's passion to deliver for other people. Hmm. So we saw local radio grow hugely in lockdown, didn't we? You know, and, uh, and personally in the UK, I saw these really dedicated people, like you said, doing the show from their bedroom because they really care. Yeah. And I didn't see that 14 years ago. You know, it was a bunch of geeks in a radio station, me included, in a radio station where now it's everyone doing it. You know, everyone and their mum are doing radio. And I think that's a real good you know, change in the last few years, especially the last few years. Yeah, I mean, I guess there is still an element of, it's all about who you know, if you wanted to get started, there is still an element of that. 100%, you know, yeah. I, I guess maybe a, a little bit less than, you know, when you first started, but I guess now, you know, with things like launching an online radio literally within a couple of minutes through us, or, you know, even people who are, being famous or well-known through things like YouTube and social media, you know, you don't need, it's not all about who you know it's all about you know what you know you know it's a case of you know you can just launch an online radio station today and you know suddenly you, you know you're a hit overnight you know mm. you know it is you know it's all about that now there isn't as you say so many barriers that stopping people who want to broadcast you know from broadcasting yeah no 100 percent agree um there was another point I was going to make that's completely gone out of my head. Oh, that was it. You mentioned about, um, you know, you, you know, a lot of people doing radio stations and, and I guess podcasts as well. Um, you know, we've got a question relating to kind of like celebrity radio, but do you still, do you think that's 
a bit more um uh, you see that still a lot more than you did 14 years ago we mean the idea of someone who's been on tv uh, or a tv judge has now got his own prime time slot do you think that's more um prominent oh, i said prominent is not the word or is it yeah so it's a good question i in the uk because you know the uk is an interesting way for radio we 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 go through these periods of giving massive slots to tv people who are terrible at radio and recently um you know our big public broadcaster in the uk radio one for example have recently had a massive switch up where basically all the famouses are gone and now suddenly you've got all this radio talent who are now famous for doing radio are on the radio and that seems to be the way we're going now so we seem to be in a weird transition of on certain stations of seeing these famous people leave and suddenly the radio talent coming through which i completely agree with the way we're doing it you know there'll be commercial stations that hire big names because big names draw audiences is wherever the audience stays because mm. we all love good radio don't we and you know we were tuning all oh, because it's amanda holden from the tv but is it good radio mm. and that's the key so i actually think it's going the other way right now i think we're going back to less celebrities more talent coming through mm. but over the past you know 10 years it, we go in our circles of celebs come back they go and they come back again so but right now i think we're going in the right way in my mind it's just radio talent coming through yeah i guess sort of like the, these radio stations become a bit more self-aware of, of mm. kind of what what works and at the end of the day it's all about listeners are these listeners warming to these famous faces if not get rid of them and replace them with someone who is an actual radio broadcaster well, because audience wins, doesn't it? You know, whatever at the end of the day, whether you're a community station, a commercial station, the BBC in the UK, or, you know, um, the American big stations, the audience is what makes the decisions. If the audience aren't listening, you go. Yeah. You know, and that's sadly but true. Simple as that. Yeah. And obviously we talked just about, um, you know, progression with, with uh, radio stations over the last sort of few many uh, years. So now the future, where do you personally see community radio going? So I think the next five years for example in community radio land is actually really exciting i think with um you know t talking about the uk i think small scale dab in the uk which is allowing suddenly a massive audience you know where i'm from suddenly a station can now reach 330,000 listeners at i think the cost of like a thousand pounds you know it's really cheap cost which we could never have done with fm 10 years ago so and now we can do that. that's amazing that brings all these new horizons in you know these new areas these new ideas and actually i think the future of community radio is really exciting you know where we see commercial radio changing recently in the last couple of years of shutting local stations down this is a time for community radio to fill the void deliver a product to the local listeners because we know the needs there and this is a time to say if you've ever thought about oh i really should do a show for my you know my local village we get on and do it right now before anyone else does because it's so easy now to do mm. and it's you know this past 12 18 months even though it's been quite turbulent with everything that's going on from where we stand in the radio industry it's become incredibly exciting as you say you know we've got people who are springing up um you know creating their own stations out of passion and you know the, the idea of just to entertain or inform their uh, local audience but then we're also seeing a lot of organizations businesses even football clubs looking at launching their own stations because you know we've got to find other ways of reaching our audience in a world that um, is probably not going to recover from you know from what we've been through now things are you know we have a new normal approaching mm. so and these you know these voids are being filled by people looking ahead and thinking you know I want to launch a radio station for my small business because I can grow it over certain many years and there we go I've got a brand new uh, you know part of my my branding there yeah that's a really interesting point about the, the businesses and we've seen it a lot recently about the football matches suddenly these local football companies are no longer relying on the big boys to come and cover the event they're just doing it themselves mm. and why wouldn't you it makes sense doesn't it you know what you know about football because it's your club your fans are going to tune in because they're your fans why wouldn't you do it yourself exactly, that's yeah. really exciting to me anyway it's yeah. really exciting to watch and go wow this is great it's kind of like a new trend of community radio we've seen it again it's niche it's keeping to a targeting a specific audience for you know in this example a football club but the building on that and actually inviting the outer community sort of i think it's hyper local it. isn't it you know it's, mm. it's hyper local that they're targeting that direct community from that direct area 
But then that community bring in their areas and suddenly now the visitors to the club and so on, oh, have you heard the radio station? And suddenly it builds a community around the football. Mm. You know, and then now you've got people tuning in for football who wouldn't normally tune in because yeah. it's building a community. And that's really exciting to see. Yeah, I mean, obviously online radio, it, you know, it's incredibly cheap, very easy to actually launch and, and you know, and, and eventually succeed at. So, you know, there is really no need to go ahead and launch like an FM station due to time constraints, expenses. So where does FM go from here? Yeah, interesting question because with my other radio hat on, it's a question I ask myself a lot, <laughs> um, you know, over here, you can't get FM licenses for community radio anymore. They're not giving them out, so that's done. Um, you know, we, we still, there's still no information on the renewals of FM. Now at small scale, it's finally being approved in the UK. So I think FM, whilst it's not going anywhere anytime soon, you know, I once wrote an article, I think it was like 11 years ago, about the future of FM radio, and I think it predicted him like, by 2020, it'll be stopped and it's 2021 and it isn't stopped yet. I don't think FM's going anywhere in the next 10 years, but it won't be a thing which we build. Mm. So for stations on FM, they'll stay on FM, but that won't be their main focus. You know, we got UK, we got small scale DAB, we got online radio, which is massive now. COVID has helped that as well, you know, um, the magic C word. And uh, yeah, so I think FM will become just another platform to listen on rather than the platform. Mm. You know, if I was setting up a radio station now, whilst I can't get an FM license, I don't think I would be get, like, bothered about it. I don't think I'd be like, oh, I want an FM license, because I don't need one. Yeah. You know, I can be on small scale, I can be online, you know, I can make podcasting, I can make on-demand content, that's enough. Yeah, so it's kind of like reached a point where it's kind of like leveled off. Eventually it might dip a little bit in terms of popularity, but as you say, it's really great to take away that, you know, FM is no longer the platform that people tout, you know, shout about listening 100%. to. It's now just join us on online through our mobile apps, smart speakers, and FM if you, you know. Yeah, you it's just yeah. another platform. Yeah. Excellent. Well, um, thank you very much, Pete, for that. They're my initial questions anyway. But, uh, you know, we have asked you to get in touch with a couple of questions that, uh, that you wanted to ask about, uh, you know, Either way, it's about Pete's experience, Pete's knowledge, but also ideas on how you can get the most out of starting your very own online radio station. So uh, the first question here is from Marcus from End Times Radio. I uh, wonder when that was set up. Um, he says, with the popularity and range of podcasts available, do you think it poses a threat to radio? I think it does if you're not delivering the content people want. Mm. So once again, if you're just playing music, why do I want to listen to you? However, if you're doing a radio station and you're podcasting your content, which you think people want to hear again, so forget the music because we can all listen to music anytime we want, anywhere we want. But you know, if, if you're on my station, Phil, and you're doing an interview about, you know, the local football club, I turn that into a podcast. Mm. So great. So I've got great content to go on my radio station. Now I've got a podcast, which people can listen to. And most people might not listen to the radio station, but that doesn't matter because they're listening to your content. Mm. So it does if you're not on the ball. The answer is you should launch both. You yeah. know, they can massively complement each other. You know, you know, a lot of the main, uh, you know, the biggest radio stations here in the UK, especially, uh, you know, overseas will as well. But they'll turn some of their content from that morning's breakfast show. We package it release it as an hour-long podcast you know if you missed it we cut out all the music but after all that's not really what you've come to listen not, to no. you've come to listen to the content you know the, the the banter between the i hate the word banter but you, you know what i mean sort of between the the people involved so it, you know it really complements it and you know at the end of the day a podcast is just a an on-demand talk show so if you've got podcasts already you know broadcast them on your station you know have a 24-hour stream that's a trend that we've seen a lot of people doing again particularly within the last 12 or 18 months are podcasting networks podcasters looking for a new output a new way for people to listen to their content and a way of doing that is by taking your dozens and dozens of episodes of podcasts turn them into a 24 7 online radio and you know you can get maybe advertisers involved maybe get other podcasters do shows on your station so yeah i i think it does pose a slight threat only if you don't do anything about it. You know, if you really, um, you know, they really complement each other. So if you really go out your way to repackage your shows into podcasts, you know, it's, you know, that they'll do anything but threat. you. I think a podcast is radio without the music and radio is a podcast with music. <laughs> yeah. So doing both, yeah. we've both got the content we want. I want to hear your interview with no music. Great, but I want to also hear music in the morning. Great, do both. Yeah, exactly. So never consider just doing one or the other, do both. 
Um, Karen has asked, uh, what's the best way to engage with and involve your local community when promoting your station? It's a good point, because we talked about, once again, finding that niche in your community station, didn't we? And, and find them the real content people want to hear. So from our point of view at the station, I've been running for, you know, too many years. We get out into the actual physically out into the community and get in touch with those people, you know, physically ask them in the street, oh, do you listen to X, Y, Z? What, what do you like? What don't you like? You know, I think it's very important. We all like to be told what's good about us, don't we? We all like to hear the good, but find out what's the bad. You know, mm -hmm. why, why does Karen down the high street not listen to you? What does she want to hear what you're not doing? Um, and of course, you know, with social media now, it's really easy to get people's opinions and you know, anyone can tell you their opinions so easily, too easily. But um, yeah, but physically for a community station, out physically out in that community, be at the local flower show, be at the local event, you know, whether you're broadcasting live or not, be there, be a presence, be branded, and that'll promote your station in a way. And then people talk about it. Yeah. You know, oh, did you see Phil from radio.co at the event? Oh, you know, and then that gets excitement about your brand. Yeah, it doesn't cost a lot to get the name, the branding of your logo on, no. on a t-shirt, you know, or, or even, you know, like some banners made and stuff. It's about, again, if you're attracting a local community station, get involved in the local community events go yeah. if there's a signing somewhere at a shopping center you know if you're allowed anyway you know make an appearance there yeah. uh, you know if these events football games just be a presence you know it doesn't matter how many people you talk to the fact of the matter is people have seen you there and you know that they they're intrigued then i think be everywhere where anyone is yeah. at any event be there wherever wherever you're doing anything or just wearing clothes and having banners doing that will build quicker than any facebook advertising can ever do mm. Yeah, be at every right place at every right time. Yeah, everywhere, <laughs> Just... all the time. Um, so it's a question from a Rod from a Radio uh, Alti, or Radio Alti, sorry. Uh, so he says, we launched a station during lockdown and have gradually seen a decline in listener numbers. We have a broad range of shows, good social media, interaction, notable guests, but it seems that, as we mentioned before, celebrity radio will always trump even the best produced local radio. In your opinion, what are we missing? It's a good question, and... I disagree that celebrity radio will trump local radio. I also don't think a decline in listeners is a bad thing mm. per se. So we launched a new breakfast show in lockdown on my station and saw a massive increase as you expect because everyone's at home. When people started going to work, it kind of leveled out. You know, it's higher than where it was, but it's not as high as what lockdown brought us. Is it a bad thing? No, people are returning to normality. Did we deliver the content for the people when we needed to? Yes, that's what we're here for. You know, are the people still listening to it now? Yes. Are the numbers lower? Yes, because we're back at work and we're physically traveling again. And, you know, but then we're in the cars and, or, you know, we're listening on the road more, we're listening whilst doing work more. I don't think it's a negative thing that some listeners might stop tuning in. I think it's great that you did a service for people in lockdown. It's great that people tuned in in lockdown because it showed they trusted you as a local station. You know, it could be sad that these people aren't listening anymore, but you know, I try not to focus too much on who's listening now, rather than just delivering the content for the people who is listening, mm. you know, who are listening. And um, in terms of celebrities trumping the radio, if people want to listen to a celebrity, they will. There's nothing you can do will change that. So don't worry about it, you know. If, if, for kind of almost forget about that. Yeah, yeah. And just as um, Rod was saying, just deliver on the local content, the best produced local content, because you keep doing that, people will come for that. And the people who are there for that will always be there for it. Yeah. You know, they want that service. Yeah, and it, it's absolutely true, as you mentioned there, you know, um, don't dwell on those people that have, have, you know, sort of tuned out of your station because as a community station, you were there for the community when it, when it mattered the most, you know, you know, you know, I guess normality has returned to some degree. People yeah. are returning to work, maybe not listening to the show as much, but you were there for people when they when they needed it. And you know, and they will come back when there's a time and they need it. Yeah. I think it's quality over quantity in this terms, you know. Do I want ten thousand listeners who have me on in the background, or do I want a thousand listeners who are really dedicated to my station? I personally want the thousand listeners and you know, from a I think we're talking about money later on, but from a commercial point of view, they're the important people, not the 10,000. It's a thousand who believe in your brand, who will act on what you say. 
Yeah, exactly. So, so good advice there, Rod. I think for uh, from from Pete there. Just don't dwell on those numbers that you feel have dwindled. I think really just focus on the people that are sticking around because you are making great radio. There's a reason why people are still listening to you, even if it is a, a, a small amount than before. So, keep up the the great work that you're doing with your your shows, uh, the production, and just the general you know um, you know outcry that, that your station's delivering because it is delivering to people, and uh, you know they for one definitely um, appreciate it so yeah keep up the good work Ron uh, another question here from Hemel from working title of his station is saw making or saw making radio okay sure. yeah um, how can we make community radio interesting and important for a very small local community he was talking specifically about a gated community so a very very small mm. almost like a village I guess for yeah it's, it's a, that's an interesting um, well, it's almost a bit like a, a student radio station or a hospital radio station where you've got yeah, a really yeah. small but targeted listener. How do you make it interesting? We'll talk about something these people care about. So if it's a gated community, for example, you know, talk about something what matters to that community. You know, I don't live in a gated community, but I imagine there will be certain things, you know, the maintenance on that tree down the road. When's that? You know, talk about the local things that are really interesting to these people. Once again, don't just play music because they can listen to it anywhere. Mm -mm. But um, talk about the things which really affect or um, are important to that community. And, um, but it, that's a, you know, we talked about earlier about a niche, that's a real niche. Mm. Um, and I wish like all the luck on that because that's gonna be a challenge, but I imagine once you've done it and it, and it, it sells, you know, you know everyone in that gay community, so it's quite easy to get out and knock, you know, are you listening? You know, it's, that's a benefit, isn't it? In yeah, a way you can yeah. physically go around and promote your station and like ask the people what they wanna hear. What do you want to hear when you're not hearing anywhere else? Yeah, don't think about what's going to make it important. Make something that's going to be important. Yeah. You know, you, if you can't think of, you know, how, how is this going to be important? Well, it's because you've got to create it and make it mm -hmm. important, such as, you know, you know, uh, I assume they're everywhere, but, you know, we have like local neighborhood watches, maybe have just some announcements about what's going on in, in the local area, keeping people safe, keeping people informed, entertained. So kind of, I guess, kind of like a uh, a community newsletter, I guess, in a way, you know, it's, it's probably a good way of going about it. You know, great, you can play music, but as Pete says, people can listen to it from anywhere they are. But, you know, include specific information and guidance and, uh, you know, you know, for, for that particular community. Yeah, and I'd also say it was sometimes with things like the, a gated community there might be people there who have these hidden talents you don't even know about mm. so uh, if there's families here you know look out for the young kids who are amazing singers but no one's hearing it you know get them on the radio because great you know if there's 30 families and that one girl or boy has that amazing talent that's something no one else will know about or be doing and something you can all relate to Mm. How about every house or apartment in that community has a show? Yeah, you or know, a feature course, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. and of course, that you know, their friends and family are going to tune into it, and you've got a little uh, audience there. Mm. Tune in. You might be tuning in specifically for certain shows, but still, it's a great way of making the most of the, in a way, the little that you've got. It's kind of, yeah. you know, so it's a, it's a good way to go about it. Uh, John has asked, what are good ways of gaining sponsors being a small internet radio station? Yeah, so... <laughs> You know, it's a challenge we all face, don't we? Personally, I face that with our place. I think, first of all, when, when you go to a company, they're going to ask you how many listeners you got, because it's the default. Well, how many listeners do I have? I think the best thing to do is turn around and clarify why that's not important. Because once again, you might have 100,000 listeners, but if they're not doing anything, they're not important. I think it's the interaction. So let's say you have a Facebook page or a Twitter page or, or whatever and you're getting a high level of interaction, which a good small community station will do, that's what you want to show the sponsors. Oh, look, you know, we've got, we only have a thousand listeners, but these listeners comment on every single post. They interact with us daily. They are on it. So in terms of a product, if we tell them about Pete's bakery, they're probably going to go along because they care what we're saying. They trust us as the local voices rather than the big boys who they don't know. You know, they know the volunteers on this station. So sponsorship's hard, but I think focusing the business on what we do is quality over quantity is the important part. And especially, you know, if it is local, you know, if you are promoting a bakery, you know, and it, it could be in the grand scheme of things, a thousand people, quite small, but you know, in that community, that could be a good chunk of the, the yeah. population there, you know, so businesses could end up seeing a huge increase in the amount of people being there, even if it is, albeit a small, uh, small amount of people. I think the key is just to always focus on 
don't get lost in the big numbers. You know, local newspapers will always tell you they circulate to 30,000 people. 30,000 people don't read the papers, you know. It's focused on, that. well, we've got this really high level of interaction. Our listeners trust us. That's what's important, mm. the level of trust and the local voice. They trust when I say go and buy a pasty, they're going to go buy a pasty, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I, I, you know, I personally, um, you know, detest sort of using social media a lot, but you can't deny how hugely beneficial it is for radio stations, podcasts, mm. TV stations, things like that. So if you are, if you can show just how rich and popular you are, through social media, through those interactions, through those shares, you know, creating content that's very easy to share, something that makes someone laugh, they're going to share that more likely than they're going to share a big long post that you've written. So work just as hard on social media as you would do on your content. And, you know, that, that can hugely benefit you in so many ways. I would just say one thing about the social media, and this is like a, a grime of mine, like a gripe of mine is if you share a picture of a Mars bar, you know, or a chalk ice, which gets 40,000 shares. That's great. But what are those 40,000 people doing? Because they're not listening to you. If I share a post about the local flower show, which gets 10 comments about people going, what's more important? You know, is the post of 40,000 shares from the people who aren't even in your area important? I personally get really annoyed because it's like, why? As a community station, you've wasted space in front of my eyes to share me a generic picture of a chocolate bar. You know, tell me something about your area. You know, share me a picture of the bakery. Mm. That's more important. And once again, the quality over the quantity. So we've got 10 comments, but that's 10 people who are going, not 40,000 people who don't listen to you. Exactly. Create content that's very easy to share, gets attention, but at the end of the day, is still relevant to your station. And yeah, your, your area, yeah. your audience. Yeah. Good. Um, we've kind of talked about this a little bit um, earlier, but so Lisa from KIS, uh, KISA Public Radio has asked, what are some creative ways to do live remote broadcasts to promote the station? And I guess with that, you know, we said about being being everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. So doing live broadcasts from, you know, local events, um, you know, something's opening or there's uh, sporting events, you know, be there and do your and do some shows. I mean, radio.co, we have a particular uh, iOS app called Pocket Streamer. And what that does is that just turns your iPhone into a portable microphone. Now, that's the only thing you really need to broadcast from. Yep. So, you know, if you want to just interview people that are at the event, you don't need your computer, you don't need your desks, you just need to connect with your phone and you can go there and interact with people at that event. So remote broadcasting, literally doesn't need anything other than a mobile phone you know and you can interact with all these people and just drum some interest with little to no effort really yeah i think you know i've i love outside broadcasting by the way it's a real passion um <laughs> it's a real passion of mine where being in the community doing it is more important than ever actually seeing that inter the immediate interaction and response of people is amazing and gone are the days where I used to take two hours to set up, you know, several computers and, and I just turn it with my phone and we're away. You know, like you said, we've got that great app. Um, and once again, in, in, a, in a new normal, people don't expect to see all the kit anymore. You turn it with a mobile phone, they're happy. Um, yeah, I love it. Just once again, to get out and do it. Yeah, well, stop I mean, trying to think why why should I why shouldn't I just go and do it. Yeah, I mean it, again, it doesn't matter how many people are involved. It's all about just doing something that's fun out. You know, that's a bit um, out of the ordinary. Um, several years ago, it was actually the the last uh, Olympics. So twenty when was that? Twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. Yeah, twenty sixteen. Yeah. I forget now because it's twenty twenty, but it's twenty twenty one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, twenty sixteen. Uh, I was working at a local radio station in Manchester, and we decided to do car park Olympics. So you know, we were only in you know the car park outside the studio, but we'd had baguette javelin throwing we had yeah. watermelon shot put you know easy things like that are so easy to set up and they're so silly and people just you know enjoy listening to it i mean we had maybe 10 people maybe fewer than that actually turn up to watch it live yep. but that didn't matter we were having fun doing it and it just got people talking it created loads of youtube content podcasting content you know so just have fun and make the most of just not being in the normal really 100%. And I think if you're, if I'm listening to a radio station and they're at an event and I can hear the presenters are having fun, I'm having fun. Yeah. Whether I'm there or not, for whatever reason, if they're having fun, it's funny, isn't it? You're like, hey, you know, he's just on the stage making a fool of himself, whatever. Um, and it does great things for your radio station and yeah. it builds that trust. Like, oh, look, they're at that event again. They're all the events, you know. 
so I guess the, more, the, the creative sense is more, I guess, common sense in a way. So just have fun outside broadcast because you're not in the normal situation. Make the most of having limited to no equipment if possible and just interact with people. Have fun. And as Pete says, if people know you're having fun, they'll, they'll enjoy listening to it. One quick caveat, though, is don't forget the listeners are listening at home and yep. they're not there. So, you know, I sometimes have listened to things where I've been like, this is great, but I'm not there. <laughs> you know, don't forget yeah, a bit of FOMO, you know. Yeah, fear of missing out, isn't it? Yeah. Don't forget people are still listening at home or driving, so still involve them in what you're doing. Um, Patrick's given a, a, a very, very interesting question, and it's, it's made me think quite a lot about it. So Patrick asks, what is the best way to move an audience from airwave exclusive broadcasting to online, but then keeping them listening online rather than through yeah. FM? That's very interesting, and I think that's something we'll, we'll all have to think about going forward in terms of the changes across the world in terms of frequencies going and so on. Um, what's the best way? Well, I think if you knew that, you'd be a millionaire. What's the <laughs> best way? I think you slowly but surely build content that people relate to online. So you slowly but surely do stuff what they can only hear online. So, you know, on your airways, AM or FM or or whatever it is, you go, oh, we're doing this, but it's online only. You know, you get them listening online only. I think when they start listening online only, they will stay listening mm. because you don't, we, you know what humans are like, we don't like change. When we finally do the change, we stay doing it. So yeah, it, you know, that's incredibly hard to do, you know, no doubt. But I think creating online exclusive content, which you can get, on FM or AM is the way to go. Yeah. Undoubtedly, you will lose listeners, 100% you'll lose listeners, but you'll gain new listeners who won't listen on FM. Yeah, and sometimes people just need a bit of encouragement to realize that, you know, listening to something online is a lot more straightforward. You know, you don't have to, you know, just listen to it at home on your mm. you know, FM radio. You can take it on your phone, you know, and you can walk, walk to the shop still listening to your, you can go to work still listening to your radio yeah. station because it's all, all online. There's no limit. Yeah, and it's, it's so accessible. So really, I think when people realize just how easy it is to actually change, even, even just a little, you know, it, it will really, really pay off. And, you know, exclusive content, things like podcasting, you know, if, you know, yeah. you want to, you know, um, we're, we're finishing our breakfast show now, but we're going to be recording our podcast soon. So if you want to hear more from us, um, come back yeah. and visit our website or go to Spotify and listen to it there. And something I think I would do just while I was talking about, as I thought about this, is I would probably maybe do a bit of, make the live stream have something exclusive no one else is getting right now. So I'm finishing my big breakfast show on FM or AM. Go, but we'll be online for the next hour answering your questions. You know, mm. you can't always do that. But for the first few weeks of launching your stream, I'll go, oh, well, I'm going to go listen online. And then suddenly you get into a habit of, oh, I'll, just, I'll just listen online. I'll just listen on the app. And then you slowly but surely phase out FM, AM. And that's your new audience. Yeah, I guess a good way is, is in getting people moving over to interacting with you on things like Facebook and stuff. You know, if you've got polls and things you want people to get involved with, bring them over there potentially, you know, and they can interact with you uh, on, the, on that. Um, so last uh, two questions. This one is called, uh, from Ron from uh, Lead Pedal Radio. Um, he says, I currently do a two-hour weekly show, but the station owner only has some very basic listening demographics. How can I determine how my one show is doing? Good question. I get asked that question a lot by my station. Um, I don't think it's important because I don't personally, when I do a show, I have access to that data, but I don't look at it. One reason might be that I don't want to know the true story. <laughs> but another reason is I don't think the audience of that show is important in a way where it really matters to an extent of, you know, you're doing a product, one, because you like it, and two, because you want to deliver a product to the radio station. We're thinking about the end goals again, aren't we? You know, we're, we want to deliver that product to the community radio station for whatever reason. Does it matter if my show gets less audience than Phil's show? No, because the audience there are important. So, you know, I would say don't worry about it. You know, I think we've always been told, haven't we, in radio, you should always think about the one person listening and you should be direct to them. You know, I agree with that. Just think about the audience who are listening. Don't think about the ones who aren't because they're not listening. Nothing you can do. Focus on the people who are listening and just do that. Yeah, and, and I guess at the end of the day, if you were to know, what difference would it what necessarily does it do? make? Yeah. Does it, you know, does it make you happy that you're getting 
more listeners than Phil? Or does it make you un, you know, sad that you're not getting as many listeners? I don't think it's important. Yeah. I don't want to know it. Yeah. So, it, so I mean, it, but if you, I guess, did want to find out, I mean, I guess a good way, we mentioned it before, you know, social media, you know, if you've got specific posts about, I'm going to be playing um, the new track by so-and-so, what's your favourite track uh, out of these? You know, things like polls or just getting mm. people to interact with you through social media again a huge another huge benefit of social media is it's a great place for people to publicly interact with you and in doing so it does end up increasing your online visibility and you know makes people easier to find you and, and obviously follow you so i would say maybe do social media content find out whether your posts your interactions are getting more popular than um, across the board and you know maybe that'll uh, that'll sort of help satisfy any particular uh, you know, I guess thirsts and, and needs for, for finding out more about your demographic. Yep, I agree. Uh, and then the final question is from Kurt, and he's asked, what is the best place to start if you're just a one man looking to launch his own community online radio station? Well, of course I would say it with us, because what <laughs> is it, two minutes? <laughs> I, think, I, just, yeah. I think I got it even quick, uh, quicker than that one. You know, it, you can be on air in no time at all. Um, but I think we touched on it earlier on, didn't we? Find the niche, whether you're one man or a hundred people, find the niche of what your community station needs to do. Build a station, ideally with us, and just start from the bottom up, you know. Start doing one live show a week, a day, whatever it is, and don't try to do too much too early. Because mm. I think that's where we all fail, isn't it? We, we want to do everything straight away, and suddenly we fail because it's just too much. Mm. It's just too much work, it's too much effort. Um, and, you know, shot have passion for it have a real passion for why you want to start a radio station and just focus on that key you know i want to start a radio station to target people in manchester who are interested in rock and roll from the 80s done that's what i'm going to do i'm not going to do anything else i just want to focus on that and do it yeah uh, one uh, piece of advice i always give to people is if they're unsure about what direction or they maybe got um i've got an idea for a show but not not necessarily a station mm. well if that's the case focus on that show even if it's two hours every friday night yeah put all your time and effort into building that one show schedule it promote it and then for every other hour of that week just put your station into automation even if it's playing a small looped hour couple of hours of just music just have that playing so then it allows you to still promote your station people can find it but they're also aware that i'm definitely going to come back at six o'clock on friday for you know the the big show every every week so focus on that one show that one idea you have but also think about you know you can use those other hours to still attract people in and you don't need to put as much time and effort into it you know particularly if you are using you know a platform like ours yeah and i think another you know without um not being paid to say this but without you know, boasting too much. I think our platform is so easy just to literally let the system run itself and put the content where you want to hear it. You know, I want to schedule a show Friday, so it's the way I do that, and then let the system look after itself. People will leave it on. You know, they will. As we know, people just leave radio on and then they start to build up this, oh, yeah, Phil's on at 6 o'clock today. And then they slowly build an audience. And then once you get you know, more audience or more volunteers, you slowly bring in other people and start to build other content yeah don't don't start too big don't um you know don't have too much that you know that you can't sort of hold it all and keep it all together just come up with a few ideas put that content together let it run itself um you know do lots of interaction on social media get people involved and then yeah you may want if you've got friends and family or you've got contacts that want to get involved allow them to you know yeah. it's, you don't have to you know people say go big or go home but there's nothing wrong with just you know not not going quite so big. Go go middling or go home. You know you know at the start. Just put all time and effort into that one idea that you may have, and then the rest of it will follow. And I don't think you should be scared of failing either. No, no. You know, I've seen so many projects start last six months and fail, but they were really good ideas, and they just didn't work out for whatever reason. But then they come back a year later and they take off, don't they? You know, without being too much like. A dragon's den or something failing is key to winning at the end of the day you have to fail to succeed at some point so if you're a one-man band and you do something and no one does listen that's fine just stop and reevaluate and do something else you know choose another topic you know and slowly but surely rebuild um keep going and you'll get there yeah so yeah that, oh, that's some good advice for you kurt you know go at your own pace fundamentally you know there's that you don't need to follow others you don't need to have this idea of what you think is acceptable for an online radio station 
do what you want to do and you know the rest of it will eventually fall into place and you know we've mentioned it before because online radio is so easy to get up and running and then continue managing you know it really doesn't need to be such a you know a cumbersome task that you may initially think that it is i think in 2021 you know where we are now after the last couple of years we've had and with technology the way it is with systems like ours it's so easy just to do something risk it you know why not let's try it see what works don't be scared and just do it yeah just do it if you're thinking about it just do it you know don't think just do it's so easy there's no reason there's no excuse for not giving it a go no and if you can beat our two minute time on our platform then you know <laughs> deal let's do it that's it well thank you very much pete for, no, for joining you. me um it's been, it's been great just to find out again a bit more about you with this being the first time i've seen you live yeah in, physically in real life. well socially distanced apart but yeah, yeah physically <laughs> so but it's been great to find out more about you and you know really sort of get your um you know your excellent amount of experience and knowledge across and i do generally think this is going to help people have the confidence and have you know get rid of those common misconceptions that we covered earlier have a good idea on you know where they want to go and, and really get their community radio station started yeah no thank you phil and i would just say a quick plug um Please. coming up on the radio.co youtube channel over the next you know a few months and so we have actually got a lot more videos on community radio and also a video dedicated just to like the differences between community and commercial radio which is like a real interesting way of like because we've delved into it here but that goes into a bit more detail and we've also got ones like a lot more tips on like community radio. So, um, you know, head over there and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, keep in touch with that. Yeah. And, and, you know, and for more videos and guides, we have tons on our website. Just go to radio.co. You can find them on our university page, on our blog as well. But also our YouTube channel. We, we're doing a huge range mm. of content. I say all about community radio. But we also have things about equipment you may want to use. You know, if you've got no idea what you want to use, Spoiler alert, you don't need an awful lot, and we'll help you with that. If you want an idea on scripting, an idea on how to get callers on your station, how to make money, you know, there are guides and videos about that across our radio.co channel, but also our founder, James Mulvaney. His YouTube channel is fantastic for tons and tons of content, just exploring the idea of, uh, you know, just how easy and great radio broadcasting and podcasting can be. Uh, and if you'd like, if you like Kurt and you would like an idea on how to actually launch your own online radio station, you uh, can. You can check out one of our on-demand demos from our website. Uh, they're all videos hosted by me, uh, guiding through the platform, showing you just how easy it is to get started. And if you want to have a one-to-one -one appointment with me, you can do. Just go to the book a demo uh, uh, area on our website. Book a call with me. We can discuss your particular plans. You know, if it's a community station, I'd love to hear about it. And I can help you uh, really get on the, uh, the right start of it and really, really get these radio stations on air. No longer does it have to be something you're just mulling over. Just just get up and do it. Just If you've got an idea for a station, get it launched. It's, uh, it's never been easier in uh, 2021. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much once again to Pete for joining me. And uh, from me, Phil, uh, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, yeah, I'll be back next month with another video all about the platform. And uh, yeah, I hope you join me for that. So uh, yeah, click subscribe if you haven't done already. And we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Bye now and happy broadcasting. Starting a radio station has never been easier. So launch yours the right way with our free hands-on guide at radio.co forward slash broadcast. Discover essential tips from choosing the best microphone to setting up the right software for your setup, plus loads more. So what are you waiting for? Start your radio station today at radio.co forward slash broadcast.